Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Starting with Starling. And today we'll add interactivity to our hero, making him follow the mouse vertically and implement the collision detection of the hero with the obstacles. Before we think about collision detection, let's first add interactivity to the hero. Let me switch to the ingame.as and inside the on game tick function, the hero takes off. Then under the flying switch case, we'll write the code for this. Let us start by adding a condition to check if the hero is already hit by an obstacle. If he is not, only then we'll make him follow the mouse. If he is hit, we'll change the obstacle to the crashed version, we'll decrement the lives, we'll also slow down his speed, etc. So, if hit obstacle less than or equal to zero, that means the amount of hit taken from any obstacle at this moment is nil. Let's start moving the hero towards the mouse inside this condition. Now one thing you already know is that Starling doesn't support mouse events. It supports touch events only. So we'll need to follow a different approach compared to what we would have done if mouse events existed. But in this case, let's define the event listener for touch event. First, to import the class. Import Starling dot events dot touch event. Let's navigate to function launch hero where we have defined the listener for on game tick. Right before that, let's write this. This dot add event listener touch event dot touch and we'll call the function on touch and we'll also define it and this event type will not be event it will be touch event to implement the touch logic we'll require a variable of type touch let's define it private where touch of type touch let me also define two more variables that will hold the x and y positions of the touch when it happens private where touch x of type number private where touch y of type number now coming back to the on touch function i'll define what the touch variable should be touch is equal to event dot get touch and we'll pass stage we are trying to get the properties of the touch that happened with respect to the stage now this variable will contain two properties that we need to access let's do that touch x is equal to touch dot global x touch y is equal to touch dot global y the global x and global y properties return to us the touch position in stage coordinates. Let's just recap for a bit. We have defined a touch event listener and are constantly listening to the touch events. If you observe, irrespective of the kind of touch, that is touch down or touch up or whatever it is, these touch x and touch y variables are constantly updated with the new values. At the moment, you release your finger or mouse the values don't change because there's no touch event and hence the hero won't change his position on the screen. Precisely what we need. Well, in our case, the X position doesn't matter as the hero won't move horizontally at all, but you get the idea. Okay, let's get back to the flying switch case of the on game tick function to use these touch position variables. Inside the if condition, I'll modify the Y position of the hero hero dot y minus equal to hero dot y minus touch y multiplied by 0 0.1 I am decrementing the position by the difference in touch y position and the hero's y position and also multiplying the value by an easing factor so the hero slowly eases towards the touch point shall we test this oh yes let's do it Oh, 
works perfectly fine just that he moves out of the screen when we move the mouse towards the edges we defined the game area rectangle in the previous episode and we can use that now to constrain his bounds of movement let's write it if hero dot y is greater than game area dot bottom minus hero dot height multiplied by point five hero dot y is equal to game area dot bottom minus hero dot height multiplied by point five. Now this was the bottom constraint. We'll write the top constraint. If hero dot y is less than game area dot top plus hero dot height multiplied by point five, hero dot y is equal to game area dot top plus hero dot height multiplied by point five. Let's test it. It works just fine. The hero is constrained to the bounds. All right now. To add a little bit of life, let's rotate the hero slightly towards the mouse when he moves. When rotating in Starling, if you want to use degrees in your values, you need to keep one thing in mind that Starling's sprite dot rotation property needs the value to be in radians. To make it convenient, it also has a degree to radian conversion method. For that, we need to import a class. Import Starling dot utils dot degree to radian. And back in the on game tick function, before we constrain the bounds of the hero, let's write the code. If minus hero dot y minus touch y is less than one fifty pixels, and minus hero dot y minus touch y is greater than minus one fifty pixels. Hero dot rotation is equal to degrees to radians minus hero dot y minus touch y multiplied by point two. Let me explain what I wrote. If the difference in the mouse position and the hero's position is less than one fifty pixels, either towards top or bottom. Then rotate the hero slightly. In our case, I have checked for 150 as the difference. I have also multiplied that value by 0.2, which gives me the value 30. So the maximum I want to rotate the hero would be 30 degrees. If I don't include the condition and simply rotate him, the hero would end up rotating, but even up to 90 degrees if the mouse movement is very fast. We don't want to do that. Now let's also reset the rotation back to zero when he hits the edges. Inside the conditions for the bound constraints, I'll simply add hero dot rotation is equal to degrees to radians of zero. I'll do that in both the conditions. Okay, we are done with the hero. Now is the time to check for collision with the obstacles. Before I start with this. Let's understand the most basic and different ways of detecting collisions in Starling. I'll explain some of the different ways of detecting collision. Not that these are the only ways; these are some of the common ways. One way is to get bounds of the objects as rectangles and detect if the rectangles intersect each other. So here, Starling sprites have a bounds property, which returns a rectangle object that defines the boundary of the sprite. We use it for both the objects we want to check the collision of. Later, when animating the objects, we constantly check if the two rectangles intersect each other. The moment they do, we stop the further checking for collision. To check the collision, the rectangle objects have a method called intersects that accepts the other rectangle object and returns true if they intersect. The advantage of using this 
it is simple fast to process but the disadvantage is that it is not precise the second way is to check the distance between the two objects using the radius property of both the objects first during the animation we get the center point of each object as a point later we calculate the distance between them constantly we also take the radius of both the objects and add them together finally we compare the distance between these points with the radius values added if the distance is lesser then we assume collision has happened the advantage it is again simple and fast to process but not precise and not suited for all the scenarios the third way is to check if a point that is x and y falls inside a rectangle of an object so we have a point we want to check the collision with a rectangular object we get the rectangle object and call the method contains that it provides passing the x and y values of the desired point if the rectangle contains the point we get a true in return advantage simple again but not suited for all the scenarios there are also complicated or detailed ways of detecting collision to pixel perfection here we extract the raw bitmap data of the objects and compare them to perfection during the animation process this is very very accurate but naturally extremely processor intensive also there are extremely intelligent or smart ways of achieving it where it need not always be collision detection but could be simple math to compare the x and y positions and width and height properties of the objects so as we can understand not all types of collision detection methods work with all types of games one of these methods might just work for all scenarios but the most important thing to consider is how much of work are we giving the processor to detect the collision it is best recommended to always go with the method that takes the least of computations as performance is one of the most important factors of programming a game to summarize it totally depends on two factors one what type of game is it and what detail of collision detection is needed two how much are you ready to compromise on resources to accomplish this task sometimes you might even need to compromise somewhere on both of these factors less detail and even less resources all right back to our game here for ease of understanding i'll be using the simple rectangle bounds collision check since we have to check for collision with all the obstacles we'll get into the animate obstacles method right after we get the obstacle to track let's write the code if obstacle to track dot already hit is equal to false and obstacle to track dot bounds dot intersects hero dot bounce so if the obstacle to track is not yet hit by the hero we do the bounce check here the obstacle to track returns a rectangle object bounce in which we call the method intersects and pass the hero's bounce rectangle since the gameplay speed is really fast just this one line gives us the desired result so inside this if condition let's first set the already hit property of the obstacle to true so we don't need to do further checking for collision obstacle to track dot already hit is equal to true let us also rotate the obstacle so it gives an effect of impact obstacle to track dot rotation is equal to degrees to radians 70 Let's set the intensity of impact which is hit obstacle to value say 30 hit obstacle is equal to 30 We also need to reduce the speed of the hero's flight let's make it 50% of the current speed so player speed multiplied by equal to 0.5 No need to worry on bringing it back to the normal speed as we already have done it in the flying switch case of the on game tick function right here okay inside the on game tick function we are going to move the hero towards the mouse only if the hit obstacle is zero inside the animate obstacles function once the collision happens now that we have set the hit obstacle to 
which is obviously greater than 0 the hero will freeze on the screen until we decrement the hit obstacle back to 0 let's do that in the else condition inside the on game tick function so else the first thing to do is decrement hit obstacle hit obstacle minus minus again on game tick function executes based on the frame rate and each frame execution reduces the hit obstacle by 1. So you can kind of consider this variable as the freezing time of the hero on the screen once he is hit by an obstacle. If you want the hero to freeze longer, increase the value of this from 30 to 50 or 60 or whatever suits. The last thing to do is to implement a camera shake effect. Let's call a function right here camera shake and we'll define it inside this we'll just shake the camera or the screen based on the value of hit obstacle yet another use of this variable the more the value more the shake if you want to exaggerate the shake effect crank up the value of hit obstacle if hit obstacle is greater than zero this dot which is the in-game screen itself x is equal to a random value math.random multiplied by hit obstacle. I'll copy this line and paste it and change this to y. Else, if x is not equal to 0, we'll reset the x and y position of the in game screen back to 0. So this dot x is equal to 0. And this dot y is equal to 0. The else part is executed all the time the game is played well when the hit obstacle is 0. We don't want to be resetting the x and y of the screen to 0 unnecessarily over and over again. So this is the reason I added another if condition to check if x is not equal to 0. Well, I hope the code we wrote is perfect and will run well and it's time to test it. So the hero flies in. Once he switches to the flying state, we can control him by mouse. Obstacles start to appear and animate. When collided, there you go. There's a camera shake, player speed is reduced, the obstacle switches to a crashed state and rotates by 70 degrees and the hero is also frozen for a moment. If you need precision in the collision check, you can even define a smaller rectangle object inside the obstacle.as and use that as the bounce instead of calling obstacle.bounce or even change the collision detection method altogether. Okay, I hope you had fun in this episode and yes, I'll cover the score and lives in the later episodes. In the next episode, I'll cover the food items that the hero can collect and gain score. It'll be very similar to how obstacles were created though, alright? So keep pouring me with your feedback, I appreciate that and subscribe if you haven't and see you next time.